preparation for full gold crown on maxillary molar. Occlusal reduction. The entire occlusal surface must be reduced to establish sufficient clearance for gold coverage. The basic outline of the occlusal anatomy of the tooth should be maintained. With buccal approach of the hand the surround end a taper diamond burr is used to reduce the buccal half of the occlusal surface. The stone is held parallel to the inclined planes of the buccal cusps and brushed across the tooth surface until 1.5 mm of tooth structure has been removed. Using a palatal approach of the handpiece, the same bar is used for the reduction of the lingual half of the occlusal surface. The stone is held parallel to the inclined planes of the lingual cusps, and 1.5 mm of tooth structure removed. The degree of clearance, 1.5 mm from the opposing teeth must be carefully verified in centric and functional excursions. It is useful to use a reduction guide for this procedure. Reduction of buccal and lingual surfaces. The axial surfaces are reduced just enough to remove all axial undercuts, establish a 5 degrees taper to occlusal, and create a chamfer finish line approximately 0.5 mm above the crest of the gingiva. The gross reduction of the buccal and lingual surfaces is started with a round-ended taper diamond burr held parallel to the long axis of the tooth. The rounded end of the burr will create the chamfer margin and the taper of the diamond burr establishes the necessary convergence to the occlusal. When the cervical two-thirds of the buccal and lingual surfaces have been reduced sufficiently with the diamond burr, the stone is slanted slightly, according to the curvature of the tooth surface for the reduction of the occlusal one-third of the axial surfaces. Sufficient tooth structure must be removed to assure a minimum of 0.5 mm clearance for gold coverage, without over-tapering the axial walls. When the buccal and lingual surfaces are reduced with the diamond burr, the cuts are extended as far as possible onto the mesial and distal surfaces, without touching the contact area of the adjacent tooth. Reduction of proximal surfaces. The diamond burr was used to extend the buccal and lingual reductions as far as possible onto the proximal surfaces, without touching the adjacent tooth. In order to avoid cutting the proximal contact areas of the adjacent teeth, the proximal reductions are continued with a flame-shaped diamond burr. With buccal approach, the burr is used to gain access to the proximal walls. A thin layer of enamel is maintained between the burr and the adjacent tooth, to protect its contact area. When sufficient access has been obtained with the flame diamond burr, the reduction of the mesial wall is smoothed and a chamfer established with a diamond burr. When the gross reduction of all axial walls is completed, the cuts should terminate supra-gingival, or slightly occlusal to the crest of the gingiva. With a sub-gingival extension. A K-type diamond burr held parallel to the long axis of the tooth, lipped margins are removed to create a smooth chamfer. Keep head of handpiece parallel to occlusal plane when performing axial reduction. 3 to 6 degrees of axial taper, long walls for best retention. Reduce the tooth anatomically. Use water spray. Support the burr with wall of preparation. Inspect for lipping at margins. The preparation is smooth, not polished. Round all sharp line angles. Break gingival contact to allow passage of a die saw through the inner proximal. On the typodont, it is recommended to maintain the margin slightly above the crest of the rubber gingiva. A pencil mark is placed to guide your reduction.